it's uh, already late, so it's great to see that still a lot of people decided to come. And as mentioned, I will present about soil moisture estimation based on satellites imaginary. We have only one earth, the same way as each of us has only one heart. And in order to keep the earth healthy, to take a proper care of it, we need to keep balance. The balance in terms of pollutions we emit and pollutions the earth can absorb. The balance in terms of resources we take from nature and the amount of resources the Earth can recreate in cer certain time frame. In recent years, this balance was disturbed, and as a result, we have rapid climate changes. Today, I would like to talk mostly, I would focus on two outcomes of climate changes, floods and droughts, and how we can face those challenges using machine learning and satellite imaginary. Satellites are already successfully used, and machine learning are already successfully used in many use cases for facing climate changes and fighting natural disasters. We can use satellites to detect wildfires and track them, to monitor urban area growth, to detect oil spits in oceans, to map forest areas, detect pollutions, to measure the depth of oceans up to 30 meters. And we can also use satellites and machine learning in agriculture for detecting uh, vegetation, for measuring size of crop fields, for estimate the food production from crop fields, for measuring the health of, of plants, for estimating the soil moisture, and for measuring the flat size. Uh, during my for the past few months, my research focused on satellites' uh, tasks related to water estimation. And uh, so what we can do with satellites and uh, water monitoring? First of all, we can detect floods. The size of the flood, the depth of the flood, and in more advanced cases, we can anticipate the future and predict the flood and act accordingly. When it comes to drought, it's not only the lack of water. It's also a problem, a big problem for, for food production. Nowadays, we see more and more farmlands using irrigation system in order to provide a proper soil moisture for, for plants. And if we imagine that the average farmland size in US and A is 500 hectares, it is becoming a challenging task to, to um, build and manage the irrigation system. We can easily imagine that in different parts of this farmland, the soil moisture is different, and we should provide different amount of soil, uh, a different amount of water uh, to those different parts. But someone may, may ask why. Why to use satellites? Why to use machine learning? It's such an expensive and complicated technology. I can easily go and Google on AliExpress the mo uh, soil moisture sensor for 58 cents. Well, first of all, if we build a satellite-based system, we can use it everywhere, anytime, even in very remote places. Secondly, again, the example of farmlands from US and A. The average farmland is 500 hectares. It's becoming challenging to cover the whole, uh, whole area with sensors like that. 
And we need to keep in mind that we need to provide power supply and communicate with those sensors. And satellite-based system becomes much more visible taking that into account. And of course, the sensor from AliExpress is poor quality. So we, we would probably pay more for 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 better quality system. Yeah. Okay, so we know, know now that we can use satellites in engineering, probably. That uh, we probably can use machine learning to estimate soil moisture. So, how to actually do that? I will show the machine learning pipeline that, uh, and my approach that I took to estimate the soil moisture. The over the high, line, uh, high level overview of the machine learning, learning pipeline is very similar to every machine learning model uh, training pipeline. So we start with data set creation, data set cleaning, and data set preprocessing. It usually takes the most of the time. It's time consuming, but it's very crucial to do it right because uh, high quality data set will help us in the future and save some time. It was proven that high quality data are very often more important than very complicated model architecture. Then of course there is model training, the place where ML machine learning happens, model evaluation where we verify performance of the model, parameters tuning, we can change number of, number of layers, type of layers, learning rates, loss function, and so on and so on. And then, of course, after parameter steering, then again, we train the model, evaluate, it's a closed loop. We do it until we are happy with results or until we give up. And, of course, if the project uh, assumes uh, deployment, at the last stage, there is a, a deployment phase. Okay, so in case of satellite-based system, we need to download satellite data. And in order to estimate the soil moisture, we need ground truth, so soil moisture. There is international soil, soil moisture network that gathers stations from all over the world and provides us with uh, soil moisture data on our basis. We can all easily Google it. It's free access. We can go and download it. Some data are missing. Some are worse quality. But in general, there is a lot of data that we can use. Then for each location, for each station, we are, and for each date, we are looking for satellite image. There are two, two agencies that provide the data for free. Uh, one is NASA, and second one is European Space Agency. We can go and download uh, satellite data from there. I decided to use Landsat 8, the satellite provided by NASA. Uh, Landsat 8 comes with 11 bands. There are three visual, uh, bands in visual light, one band in infrared, two bands in short infrared, two bands in thermal infrared. Here on the image we can see uh, those grayscale images are images for each band separately. The last one is uh, composite image RGB. There are eight bands visualized and the, one, the last one is the composite one. Okay, after obtaining the data set, we move to the cleaning stage. We are interested in measuring soil moisture. So in order to measure the soil moisture, the assumption is that different wavelengths are absorbed and reflected differently for different wavelengths. And in order to measure it, we need to actually measure the reflectance of the surface. So clouds that are on the way, usually, usually we have a cloud, clouds on, on, in the sky, are covering the surface and therefore we cannot perform measurements and train our model on those data. So we need to remove uh, images that uh, are with clouds. Landsat already, there are some algorithms to estimate the probability of the cloud. Landsat al already provides, NASA already provides the, uh, those probability maps so it's uh, easy to filter based on the clouds. We also filter here based on the uh, moist, soil moisture quality. There are also flags provi provided by Soil Moisture Network. Uh, we can also look for outliers to filter them out. And in case of Landsat, uh, 
Landsat is working in visual light and infrared, so we want to take only images taken over the day time. We don't want images taken uh, during night time. Okay, we cleaned our data and we move to the pre-processing step. In the pre-processing, as I mentioned before, we are interested in surface reflectance. So the light that reflects from the ground and goes to the satellite. And Earth has pretty dense atmosphere. Only about 7% of light reaches, that is uh, reflected, reaches the satellite. The rest is scattered by air, clouds, or absorb, absorbed by water vapor, and so on. And therefore, we need to correct for those, all those scattering and, uh, and uh, absorption. Uh, there are algorithms that can do it. Mm, we need pro to provide depth point, elevation, air pressure, and so on. Uh, and if we, if we provide those data, we can algorithmically correct and get those 7%. Actually, we are interested in maybe those as well because it's long wave radiation that, uh, uh, that tells about, about the temperature. And it looks more like uh, something like that. So on the left side, we see the image before atmospheric correction. On the right, the image after atmospheric correction. It's much, much more clear. On the side note, uh, Earth has pretty dense atmosphere. Mars, on the other side, has a very thin atmosphere and very, very transparent atmosphere. So actually, if we do a remote sensing on Mars, we don't need to apply uh, the atmospheric correction. So the Earth remote sensing, for Earth remote sensing, it's bad, but it's good for life because the dense atmosphere is protecting us from solar radiation that is harmful for, for, for life. OK. We went through the whole process of, build, of building our data set. It took quite a lot, lot of time, so it's time to pick a model and try and finally do some machine learning. I decided to pick three different models just to evaluate how it performs. Linear regression, XGBoost regressor, and multilayer perceptron. Here we have a regression problem. The soil moisture is usually between 0 and 0 0.6, where basically the soil moisture meets the amount of water in uh, cubic meter of soil. So basically zero means that the soil is completely dry, one means that there is 100% of water in, in, in the soil. And usually it doesn't happen, so usually the soil moisture is between zero and 0 0.6. It's a regression problem because we need to, we want to co predict the continuous value from zero to 0 0.6. And therefore all those models are regression models. As the output, we of course have the soil moisture. As the input, we have different wave, wave uh, bands. So the intensity uh, captured by the, uh, by the sensor, so satellite sensor, for different, different wavelengths. In case of Landsat, there are 11 bands. We don't use them all. I decided to use eight bands. And I also decided to not only take the single points, to take rather the, also the surrounding. It was 60 by 60 pixels square. Just to average the results and more, make results more stable. And here comes the model evaluation. Linear regression failed completely. I mean, it's reasonable. It's not linear problem, so fitting a straight line doesn't work at all. XGBoost regressor and multilayer perceptron did similarly good or similarly bad. Because if we look closely, the, there is a correlation between those uh, orange points are our predictions. The, the blue points is uh, ground truth. I sorted it just to make it uh, just to make it more easy to read. There is some correlation, but coefficient of determinants is about 0 0.53. Usually, a good model has the coefficient of determinants be above. 0 0.7. The bad model has the coefficient below 0 0.3, so it's somewhere between. So let's say it's an average model. Uh, is that all? Or maybe we could be do better? Well, 
I started to think about the problem again and realized that we cannot overcome the rules of physics. So I decided to use visual the Landsat 8, which works in the visual light, in near infrared. Those wavelengths are highly absorbed by objects and by plants, but by anything that is usually on the surface. And we are interested in soil moisture, so we actually need to measure the reflectance from the soil, not from the plants. And taking into account that uh, the machine learning model predicted the soil moisture, mostly in cases that w the model was seeing plants, not the soil, and estimating, OK, this plant looks quite, quite healthy. It's this type of plant, so moisture is probably that and that. So actually taking that into account, the model did a pretty good job. But because the visual light doesn't go through objects usually, that's why when we see objects, we don't see through, we see objects, uh, then probably the Landsat 8 was not the best choice. So can we do better? Actually, it turns out we can. There is also, I decided to use Landsat 8 that is using visual light and infrared. But there are also other satellites, like for example, Sentinel-1 that is using 5.6 gigahertz. And those wavelengths has better penetration capabilities. Uh, 5.6 is almost same as our Wi-Fi at home, for example. Here is an example image of uh, taken by Sentinel-1 on the left side. It's a uh, row that we can download from, from, from the website. Actually, it's not really a row, it's already processed, uh, but uh, it's raw in case uh, our processing with machine learning. It looks a lot of like noise. After calibration is done, it looks much better on the right. We already can see some contours and some objects. And then we come to the model training. In this case, I slightly switched from multi-layer perceptron to convolutional neural networks, mostly bef because the SAR images are still a bit noisy, and convolution can uh, handle that. On the right side, we have the moisture map. We can see the SAR objects has mm, quite huge absorbance by, by water. So actually, if we see here water, the water is almost black, and here also some legs is, is black. In, the, in this soil moisture, the water was uh, cut out. Uh, but we also see that here, maybe it's not clearly visible, those are mountains, and here is a valley. And actually, the soil moisture in the valley is, uh, is higher, so it looks good. I mean, the coefficient of determinants is 0 0.64. So it's better, but still maybe not, not the best. So, about limitations and future work. Here, first of all, the, even if we use SAR images, SAR base, so for, for example, Sentinel-1, the penetration depth is still up to 10 centimeters deep in the soil. So we can measure only soil moisture up to 10 centimeters. And the resolution is not, not the best, it's about 3 kilometers. And future work, so using, it would probably the results can be even further improved by using both SAR and Landsat 8 data, Sentinel-2 data. We can utilize different category, categorical variables like soil type, climate, air temperature. We could also use LSTM to predict the future, anticipate the future and predict future soil moisture values. And we could build the model, this is slightly different, it's uh, for semantic segmentation for flat size monitoring, so uh, instance of regression uh, semantic segmentation. And uh, of course in this work I, you know, for predicting the soil moisture, I uh, discarded urban areas and, uh, and forests because those are highly uh, covering the, the soil, so it would be really hard to estimate the soil moisture uh, in the forest, for example. Thank you for watching, and uh, time for questions.
That's right. <laughs> Time for questions, so we start Q and A, and I see first person. Yeah, um, you mentioned that you used um, regression techniques, regression model, but we didn't see much variety, much range of uh, expectations because you mentioned that it's from zero to one. Uh, so maybe it, uh, did you try um, some classification because it's uh, from zero to six point six. So it may be ten or six classes, and did you try to um, did it as a classification problem maybe? Uh, yes, I, I tried classification as well, and uh, it didn't work well. I mean, regu so f uh, it's not only five classes because usually the the soil moisture, the average soil moisture, is something about zero point twenty two, and zero sometimes happens, but maybe on Sahara, zero point six sometimes happens, but probably mostly. I mean, in, I don't know some tropical forest or, or so on. Uh, but usually the values are between 0 and 1 and 0 and 0.3. Like most of the values are between 0 and 1 and 0 0.33. So we should actually take more, uh, more categories between. Uh, I tried, first of all, with 10 different categories to estimate, OK, um, to, cal to, class to make the classification between 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, yeah. and so on. Uh, I mean, it maybe worked, but 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 is very close. I mean, it doesn't really tell us. It's not very valuable for us. Uh, so then I tried with uh, step by uh, 0 0.01, but then it didn't work well. So it, and it was actually almost regression. I mean, different loss function and so on, but regression did better job in this case. Um, do you know if anybody has uh, built a better predictor already, or is this something like new and emerging, and you're just one of the people investigating methods of using that? So there are maps, soil maps, uh, soil moisture maps that uh, are available online, provided also, for example, by European Space Agency and NASA. But the problem there is resolution. Uh, so NASA, I guess NASA is providing 40 kilometers resolution. Uh, European Space Agency recently introduced uh, up to one kilometer resolution. Uh, uh, but also there is a problem. There are some other researchers that, uh, for example, say, OK, we achieved 0 0.82, the, the, the coefficient of determinants. But it's really hard to compare because uh, uh, sometimes they only measure those, uh, do the measurements and study on some certain area that they've chosen, or uh, they exclude a lot of land covers. Here I excluded trees because we cannot see much from much, uh, uh, we cannot see the soil in forests, for example. But of course, if we exclude more and more land covers and only stay with bare soil, where we see only soil, we get really good results. My research was more uh, general to address different uh, land covers. OK. Uh, you use only uh, free uh, imagery satellite imagery, yes, from Landsat uh, and... Uh, uh, if I used... Uh, only free one? Yes, yes. So, so I only used uh, free av av available for everyone. Mm -hmm. So Landsat and Sentinel, both one from NASA and mm -hmm. one from European Space Do Agency. you plan on buying some, you know, uh, with better resolution, some imagery to improve your data? Um, no, there is no funding for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. And someone else? Okay.
So I was thinking about mm, uh, so uh, sorry. Uh, so in this model that you build, you only take into con consideration how much uh, light is reflected by the soil. But do you think about mm, adding some feature that tells about uh, in what uh, mm, how far uh, from the single point is the nearest uh, water or ocean to take this into consider uh, to the model as input no i didn't take into account as uh, to the as the model input uh, the assumption was that okay if i use the model and if i take the for example the window size of 60 pixels uh, then the model can resonate about it by itself and look, okay, here is a water, and uh, then probably it's, uh, it, it will ha have uh, higher moisture. Uh, but of course, uh, it's a good point. It's maybe worth trying to uh, validate this approach as well.